Hey, what happens, guys? Today we are going to talk about another classic circuit you should know. And this circuit is called the single stage delay. The reason it's called the single stage delay is because it only uses the one transistor. We could add another PNP transistor in parallel with this, and it would be a dual stage delay. And we might get into that later, you know, if I get some feedback that that's something you guys want to see. But for uh, today, we're just going to talk about this single stage delay circuit. It's really simple, and like I said, it is a classic circuit you should know for sure. So people are always asking me, okay, so what can I use it for? Well, delay circuits are used for a lot of things. Now, one thing about this is, even though this is classically called a, a delay circuit, I would call this more of a timing circuit, because this is going to be a turn on when you press the button. So think of it that way. Of course, you can move the components around and have it so that the LED turns off, but I'll leave that to you. So what do we use it for? Well, you're going to use delays in things that require sequential activation. If you have a complicated product that needs things switched on, you know, first this switches on and it needs to come up to temperature, then we can switch on part two, and then it has to stabilize, and then part three. So those are the types of circuits in which you are going to use a delay. And yes, you can get ICs for it, but that takes out all the fun. It's fun to know how these things work made out of discrete components. Let's take a look at this circuit and examine it and figure out how it works. Now, my ca my camera uh, crapped the bed the first time I did this, so it already has my notes on it. So we're going to be powering the circuit from 4.2 volts DC. It really doesn't matter. You know, we're going to be lighting an LED with this circuit, so, you know, protect your LED with the proper current limiting resistor for whatever voltage you want to use in the circuit. Of course, don't overvolt your transistor. In this case, we're using a 2N2222A, but it can be any NPN transistor because the gain doesn't matter. We're basically using it as a switch. We're turning it on and we're turning it off. Now, right here is our capacitor in the circuit. And between the capacitor and this resistor, we are going to control the timing of this circuit. But don't think of this as an RC circuit. It's really not. The charge discharge rate of the capacitor is what is mainly controlling the timing. Now this resistor, in the case we're using our circuit, is one meg. It is going to limit the current on the transistor, which is going to only open up the gate here. Not the gate. Well, I call it the gate. It's only going to open up this channel from collector to emitter so much you know we can open up a little bit we can open it up a lot if you open it up a lot a lot more current's going to flow and it's going to discharge the capacitor faster so by only opening it up a little bit we can add time to this and this circuit is going to work for about 22 23 seconds now if you want to change it you can simply change the capacitor and get more delay out of it. So how does it work? Well, we have press the button. And when you press the button, the current flows down from our source through the base resistor and opens up the collector to the emitter channel, which allows current to flow again from our source through this resistor, lighting our LED through that channel and down to ground. Now, at the same time, and that's what this dashed line is here for, these are two parallel circuits. At the same time that that button is pressed, we are charging up this 10 microfarad capacitor. When we let go of the button, the charge from that capacitor is going to flow this direction. See, we're always getting a positive current flow into the base of our transistor. It's either coming down from the source or up from the capacitor. It doesn't matter. And until that capacitor completely discharges, the transistor will conduct, therefore, the LED will light. Simple enough for you? Should be. It's a really easy circuit. Let's uh, take a look at the one I put together on the breadboard. So there it is. Looks pretty much like what you see. What you see is what you get. Let's uh, zoom in here a little bit. There is our 2N2222, and it is set up emitter, base, collector. There's our emitter going directly to ground. The base, that middle pin, is going through that 1 meg resistor to one side of the switch. The other side of the switch is going to VCC. Coming from VCC here is our 1K resistor going to the anode of that LED. The, uh, the ca cathode of that LED goes to the collector. 
which when the base opens the channel will flow through the collector out the emitter and to ground that's it man that's all there is to it so let's make it work hook up the power power it up and she's lit three four five six seven eight watch it not go out watch it prove me a fool nope there it goes I can see it dimming can you see it dimming maybe I'm crazy maybe it's not dimming maybe it's just me that's no, definitely dimming it is about to go out so let's light her up again ready and we'll watch it happen again And there she goes. Almost gone. Holding on a little bit. Still a little bit of life left in her. And she's gone. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll pull out our 10 microfarad. And let's put in... This is 22 microfarad. So this should give us about double just so you can see how the timing of the whole thing works. Ready? And one, two, three. So this should hold on for, you know, close to a minute or so. We'll see how she does. So how are you doing today? Pretty good? Good. Today, if you don't know, is the one-year anniversary of the uh, Tree of Life Synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, where some psycho shot 12 poor people who were just going to their religious services. Sad. But that's the world we live in. And there's our LED cutting out. So I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing while it goes out, but watch what happens when I pull the capacitor. It goes out, and that simply proves where it's at, where the, where the current source is coming from. Now here's a big one for all you size queens out there. 1,000 microfarad. Make sure that's discharged. And we'll plug that guy in. Power it up. Got to hold that a little longer so she charges good. And uh, we're not going to sit here and watch this whole thing go. Because that's 100 times bigger than the 22 seconds. So that's, you know, 22 seconds times 100 or so. Oh, I'm sorry. Times 100. Times 100. Yeah. I'm rambling again. All right. I'm done rambling. You guys got the delay circuit now. You see how it works. When you press the button, current flows through. The base resistor lights the LED when you let go. The capacitor that has been charging is now powering the circuit. And I can prove that again here by simply <laughs> pulling off the switch. Yeah. Right? Because the switch wants to come out. You know, usually you can't get a switch to stay in a breadboard. In this case, it won't want to come out. Jeez Louise, man. As you can see, the LED is still lit. Come on. Try not to disturb the capacitor. There we go. So you can see it's still lit, but if I pop out the capacitor, it goes out. Proving the science of the circuit. So, if you guys enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to everyone who supports me through Patreon. Um, a few guys have sent me stuff in the mail. Some of you guys have uh, contributed through PayPal. Hey, I love you all, guys. You're all my brothers and my sisters. We all got to get along in this world. That's it. I'm out. Peace.